Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you for a new episode of Education Exchange, the most popular program in Iowa City and all over the cable TV. Uh, tonight, we have a present for you. We have Penn Elementary of North Liberty, a great school, very vibrant. We didn't stop laughing before we got into the show on the stage backstage, so I, I hope you will enjoy with us the wonderful group of teachers, principal, and students. Uh, Christy Hafner has been with us before, very familiar face on our local TV here. And uh, you have three of your uh, team representing all the staff of the school today. Deborah uh, on your right hand side, followed by Chris and then Dawn. And uh, you will tell me what every one of them is doing. And then on your left hand side, there is a bouquet of the stars of the future. That's Already so one good. of them is going to replace me as host and producer of this. I think it's between Caden and Maxwell. We'll see if uh, <laughs> Mr. Peterson and John Karhoff interview them. They will select one of them. Although I prefer, as a matter of fact, to be replaced by a young lady. So, so I am in between Britain, yeah, uh, or uh, Shelby K, yeah. right? So, uh, Deborah, what are you doing? At I'm school? a teacher librarian at Penn. Uh, so I teach classes, I help students find books to check out, I help them uh, learn how to do research and find materials in the library and online increasingly um, using technology. And you are delighted because you have a new library? And I'm delighted because I have a brand new library this and year. And you will tell us about yes. it, right? Yes. Chris? I'm the student and family advocate at Penn Elementary. And my job is to break down barriers that could keep a student from learning, whatever that may be. It's my job to look into it and get some resources, get some help, and get the students learning. So you work hand in hand with the guidance counselor, Ms. Don? Hand in hand with the guidance counselor, yes, as well. So you, what do you do exactly? So as the school counselor at Penn, uh, I believe I wear lots of hats, but one of my most important ones No, is, you don't have more hats than me. No, you do have a lot of hats. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You are the hat man. Right. Um, <laughs> so figuratively speaking, yeah. okay, not literally. Um, I think my most important job, my most important role at the school is teaching the classroom guidance lessons. Oh. So I am in every classroom every week for 27 minutes um, teaching lessons about what do you do to be a better student and a better friend and to be the best you that you can be? Great. And Christy Hafner, tell us about your new role now, a new uh, role now as a leader of the school. After all this renovation and the improvements and the additions and all the money that you took to improve yeah. your school and make it a very beautiful one, right? Well, I actually today was reflecting and thinking that it's been about two years from this time right now that we began the process of planning, meeting with the architects for them to get our ideas about what we wanted in a remodeled school and in our addition, what did we need. So it's been um, a long two-year process, but our motto has been, it will all be worth it in the end. That's what I keep telling them all. And, uh, and we're believing it. It's, it's all coming to fruition, and it's, it's really great. Uh, we all get a lot more steps in because we added like 20,000 square feet to the building. So it's much, much larger. Um, so one of my roles is to think how do we keep our community tight and close and still connected with each other. Um, but I'm just going to segue here a little bit and say one of the greatest things about our addition is that we got some new spaces that are large and that allow our entire student body to be together. And that's why we have these students here because one of our recent 
big assemblies was for Veterans Day. And um, we could have never done this before we had our audition, but um, Chris and Don worked with students and veterans, and we had a really very meaningful celebration. So I'm going to have Don introduce our students. The real stars of our show. The real, the real stars. stars. They are. Okay. They're the stars of our lives. That's yeah. absolutely yeah. true. So we have um, four students today, and during our Veterans Day Assembly, these four students performed a short skit for the crowd that was there. So we have uh, Maxwell Thompson. He is a fifth grader. Uh, we are we are not on the screen yet. Uh, those are oh. the the old students. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is what they'll look like in the future. Exactly. Right? Right. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so the so, four. Yeah. Go, go ahead. So we have Max. He's a fifth grader. And then in the red shirt, once they come on the screen, that's Shelby. She's a fifth grader as well. And Britton is in the long sleeve gray. And then. Uh, the last fellow on the top, the short sleeve shirt, is Caden, and he is a sixth grader. And uh, they they are going to introduce or present a skit mm -hmm. that they did about the Veteran Day. Right. 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 And it's, right. it's entitled "Who Is a Veteran." Okay. Let us see, because now we are exploring your talents and your gifts. Can you go ahead, Maxwell? Hey, did you bring your markers and paper? Keep going. You're hey, did you bring your markers and paper? Yeah, I have everything we'll need for our pictures and drawings. What are we going to draw? Don't be silly. You know we're here to research veterans and the Veterans Day holiday on November 11th. How do I draw a veteran? I don't even know what it is. A veteran is a who and not a what. You'd better start by going to the dictionary and looking up the definition of a veteran. What do you mean a veteran is a who? Look it up. We can use the definition in our project. All right, all right. Here it is. A veteran is a person who has served in the armed forces, an experienced soldier, especially one who served in time of war. And Veterans Day is a legal holiday in the United States, honoring all veterans in the armed forces. See, a veteran is no one. It's a person who died for our country. They're the ones that get flags put on their graves on holidays. No, no, no. A veteran isn't always someone who died in a war or who even fought in a war at all. She's right. A veteran is a man who has served in the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, or Air Force. Brittany, I would like you to turn to me so that uh, we show your face to the audience and the viewers later, okay? Go ahead. Well, you're half right. What do you mean, half right? Well, women can be veterans too. Many women have served our country in the armed forces in times of peace and in times of war. Women can be veterans too. You mean a veteran doesn't have to have been in a war? No, just having been in the armed forces makes a person a veteran. Wow, veterans are really special people, aren't they? I mean, if a person in the armed forces and we have a, is in the armed forces and we have a war, they have to go, right? No, not really. Veterans are people who have already served but are no longer in the armed forces of our country. My grandfather is a veteran. He was in the Korean War. And my uncle is a veteran, too, because he was in the Navy. You know, veterans really are special people, and they deserve to be honored with holiday. There are lots of patriotic songs that honor veterans of our country. Maybe we can include a song with our project. I think there's a songbook over there that has all the words to patriotic songs. Great. Let's pick out one that everybody can sing along with. Veterans Day would be a good time to remember and to thank veterans for all they have done for us and for our country. That uh, sounds great. Uh, we got a couple of pictures of you uh, when you were doing this. A couple of pictures were us listening to you, and that's fine too. 
Uh, now, uh, tell me what is next after that? Well, I think probably just even talking about why we had an assembly would be a good idea. Yes. Sure. I think Chris really was um, a strong force in making that happen, so we'll let her talk about why are you, she thought. Are you trapping her or something? No, okay. not really. She really, was, <laughs> she really was a driving force behind why we did it. Who is so. the boss? I mean, who is like, uh, are you giving her an assignment now? No, she's the boss. The boss. There's only one boss. That's Nobody the boss. It's Chris, not Kaden. Not Kaden. I no. thought Kaden is. Christie's the boss. We we had talked about it before. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, my husband happens to be a Vietnam vet. Oh. And, and so it it was, it meant something to me. And I knew there were other schools doing things. And you know, I had talked to Christy before. I'm like, we need to do something. And we did need to do something. But again. Part of the issue is we just didn't have a space big enough where the whole student body could show up and we could have guests show up and all the staff. There just wasn't a place. So once this project got going with this new school and the gymnasium is incredible. So once that was complete and then Mrs. Hefner was like, we're doing it. So we're like, okay, we're, we're taking this on. And so um, it, it was some work. Uh, some things we hadn't thought about or any of that, but um, we just invited students who had family that were vets or in the military, and we invited them to come. Dawn announced how many? 20? 26. We had 26 veterans there who were um, guests of our students. Somehow connected to someone at Penn, and she, you know, introduced them all and who they were connected with in the, in the building stood up, and she told, um, you know, what they were, had done and any awards they had won. And just, you know, the look on those kids' face, you know, that I'm connected to that vet. I mean, they were so proud, and it just was, it, it was a whole lot of fun. And so uh, the work that went into it was well worth it when you saw the so, outcome. So uh, Brittany was talking about Grandpa, who was a veteran. Is it, uh, is it a real uh, story or just script? That was part of the skit. So oh. she didn't... She okay. didn't have a grandfather there that was a vet, but, oh, okay. but we certainly had, had some several grandfathers that were that were there. Okay. Uh, you know, we had some husbands of staff members. You know, we had parents of, of you know students. Um, you know, there and uh, the older children then sat in and listened to um, two vets on a um, uh, panel. yeah a panel discussion. Um, so we just had a lot of different things. We also had some really nice. Uh, singing and support from uh, Sarah Pazer, the the music teacher at Penn, who you know after they said let's sing a song, you know then we actually did sing a song, and she had taught the fifth and sixth graders a song to sing to the vets, and you know it just it just went really well, and just we had so much space, it was just so fun. Uh, let us move to the library now. I mean, okay. uh, tell us a story. About you, the library? Did you, you bring, did you bring some pictures? Of? I did, but, okay. um, and first I'll say we had, um, the, well, the old library was in a, uh, it's kind of a glorified hallway. There were three <laughs> classrooms off the library. You had to walk right through the middle all the way across to get to the computer lab. So all day long we'd have kids walking back and forth. If um, Sometimes we might get a little loud and I'd have to think about a classroom nearby. Sometimes they would get loud and so we'd have to, just be aware, you know, of what we were doing. Um, there were no windows in the library, um, and, it, and it was it was small. It was a small space. So when Christy told me, but in <laughs> 1970, when it was, it the old library was an addition to the building in 1970, right. 68, 70. Yes. It was a state of the art place. Yes. That that's worth re repeating. But time just went on and. North Liberty grew and more students were at Penn, and we really outgrew that yes. space. And we had added technology, so there was really no place to put computers in the room for, to look up books. And um, then we had got an interactive whiteboard, a smart board, and it was um, hard to, for a while we had that, and people would walk in front of it as they went back and forth to the computer lab. So um, it, it was a fun, very functional space, but when Christy told me that we were going to get a new library, I was pretty thrilled about that because I knew just I could imagine what could happen with a new space, and it's it's really come 
to into fruition. And so Deborah, you, you are a teacher librarian. This means yes. that you are teaching courses I in... I am uh, teaching, uh, uh, like Don does, I see every student um, each week for 27 minutes, um, so they come for a class. Younger students often get a story and then a little lesson, or we might do an activity. Older students spend more time doing research projects or being on the computer looking things up or um, learning how to use the library, learning how the library is organized. And, um, so can, can I say that uh, the renovation of the library had brought changes in the curriculum too? And the schedule somehow? I think it um, it's just allows us to do more things simultaneously. So while I'm having a class, students can come in and be checking out their books. Um, so sometimes we'll have in another part of the library. So we were able to have different areas in the library so different activities can take place at the same time. And how did the families and parents receive this news about the library? I think um, they were happy with that. Very or? well received. Yeah, people walk in. It's as you walk in, it's a kind of a wow space. So um, I did bring some pictures so we can look at those. Uh, we're ready. Yeah, I see yes, the this is our large food table. area and our smart board. Um, the tables are all on wheels, so those can be moved uh, quickly. We can actually move all the tables and chairs in about 15 minutes, and then have a large group. Um, for a visiting guest. We had a visiting author recently. I'll show a picture in a few minutes. Um, this is a reading area where students can just sit and read or we have book club meet here uh, before school. Um, students really like this space. This gets used a lot. And that's a student book club. Yeah, there's that's a student yes. book club. And actually, can we go back to that picture? Because I'm thinking you can, there are windows there and you can see heads on the outside. Mm -hmm. So we have this huge courtyard as a result of the addition allows us to have this courtyard where students can, classes can go out there and do activities. Our preschool has recess out there. But I actually think that might be the day that they came to do the planting because there are mm -hmm. plants, mm -hmm. the trees, bushes, mm -hmm. annuals will be there. Um, and I kind of think that's the day that the courtyard got planted. Yeah, and you can't see the windows, but they go all the way up to the ceiling, top of the ceiling. This is the story corner where um, primary students come in and have a story time and um, select picture books to check out. Um, this is just a little nook that we were able to create, um, just another place for kids to read in the library. Um, here's a story, here's an actual story time in progress. And then you can kind of see the space with the high ceiling. and. So it's just a real inviting place. So we really wanted it to be a place that kids wanted to be there. And it's, it's a good idea to have those circles. You mean kids like, this is my space. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, this yes. is a border. Yeah, that's kind of that's, the idea. Yeah. Yeah. And here's kids reading. Um, they've just come to check out books, and then they can sit and read until they're ready to leave with their class. Uh, more kids reading. Somebody's still choosing books. Yeah, it really, it, it's very different from how it was before um, because... Uh, we had a visiting author a couple weeks ago, um, third and fourth grade kids uh, came in and heard her speak. Um, she has books, she's a Taiwanese American author and our art teacher worked with the fourth grade students to create the, the dragon kite which kind of went along with her books and they were very excited to have her come and some of their artwork is on the wall so uh, so really all our third and fourth graders? All our third and fourth graders were able to fit in the space. And, and again, it just takes a few minutes to, to move the tables out of the way and then have all kinds of different activities. Our head place. director in this show, uh, Mr. Michael Peterson, used to teach at Penn. Now I think yeah. he's attracted to the place now. He probably <laughs> wants to go back and, uh, and do we that again. Well, you come out of retirement for well, us. Well, yeah. you have to pay me a lot of money to take him away from us. <laughs> Honey, I think one of the things that Deborah referred to is being able to move the tables out of the yeah. way. It's so one of the things I think um, is a new sort of thought in construction of schools to have flexible spaces that can change and that can mm -hmm. serve multiple uses. The other big thing is um, I don't know that the space changed our curricular focus, 
but technology has changed how we deliver instruction, how students are able to show their work, um, and our building before just really was challenged mm -hmm. to, to handle the technology needs. I know, Chrissy, that was not agreed upon in our script, but I would like to talk to the kids about their uh, future. I mean, how do they think? I know three, three of them, I think, are fifth graders. Grad, uh, fifth graders, and there is one that's graduating yep. from your school yeah. this year. Yes. And I would like to give them this, the last five minutes for the kids because this is... Do you want is, them to come over here? No, I think uh, the, oh. the, the, they are back in their uh, stairs oh. there and uh, and I just uh, run a little conversation with them and then start with uh, Mr. Maxwell. Uh, other than replacing me, do you have a plan B? <laughs> uh, no, not really. What would you like to do in the future? I just want to see how uh, the school had helped you figure out your talent and your gift and and we haven't talked about yeah. careers yet this yeah. year in classroom guidance but we will yeah but we've talked about them before so what are your thoughts about that what? maybe a video game designer uh you want to design video games yeah oh that's that's very profitable uh, career by the way Great. You are on, 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 the, on the screen now, so that's very good. And, and now let us move to Caden and, and see his, uh, his dreams about the future and the aspirations. Well, my dreams would be replacing you. <laughs> 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 I'd be pretty great. <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to work on this. <laughs> uh, you mean the beard? Uh, yeah. Okay, we have to, you have to work very hard. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple years. Other other than this, yeah. I might want to be a comedian. Everybody tells me I'm funny. So you like stand up? Try stand up. Oh, that's another profitable career, definitely. Double job bills, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can be a late night show host, right? On TV. Mm -hmm. Just like David Berberman and all these people. Mm -hmm. uh, very good. Uh, how about Brittany? Tell me about your dreams. Like 10 years from now, 15 years, how do you see yourself? I want to grow up to be a teacher oh, or wow. a pediatrician because I really like to work with kids. Oh, great. And what Britton hasn't said is that her, her mom used to teach at Penn. Her mom used to be a kindergarten teacher at Penn. Oh, that's so. super. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's very good. That, why do you want to be a teacher? I just love to work with little kids and see them grow and stuff. Oh, great. That's super. And Shelby K? I want to be an artist when I grow up. Oh, okay. I like art, and I would be an art teacher, too, because I like looking at how they do art. Who is your art teacher at Beth Penn? Um, you know? And so you work sometimes with her, or is there an art, art club there at uh, Penn? Over the summer, she has an art camp that kids can go to. And what kind of art do you do? Like, uh, you like ceramics? You like painting, drawings? Um, what would you like? I like pastel paintings. Oh, pastel. That's one of the sometimes, most difficult. Yeah. Very good. Painting. You know, Iowa City has one of the oldest pastel group in the United States. They are all artists and the uh, every, uh, I think, Saturday they meet and they show each other. Most of them are old people, but, oh. but they, have been, they have been here very, it's very well known, just like Iowa Writers Workshop, Iowa Pastel Group. So uh, Iowa City is very famous for pastel. That's very nice. Uh, so guys, uh, it looks like you are a very talented group of people. And uh, who is leaving now? Who is leaving the school? Oh, Caden. Caden, you are going to be in uh, uh, North Central or Northwest? North Central. North Central, okay. You will find a lot of activities to fulfill your 
talent there, definitely. We congratulate you for, uh, for a wonderful group. Any, uh, would you like to talk to our audience? We have one minute, if you're uh, ready. Hafner? Well, I think um, one of the big things is um, this is a great community to send your kids to school in, whether it's at Penn or any of the Iowa City School District community schools. Um, they're going to get a rich experience wherever they are. I, um, Penn is one of the first big building projects, but they're happening across the district now. Um, even the reason that we wanted to have the Veterans Day Assembly is kind of because we really value public education and what a privilege it is to have public education. So I think these guys are a great example of well, the future. On behalf of John Carhoff and Mike Peterson and Bree, uh, the camera lady who is helping us today, and the family of Public Access TV, this show will be on Channel 18 Cable, Channel 21, the education channel. All the time will be running maybe for two or three months, and then we'll be on Public Access TV website. Please go. If you can't find it or you don't have the cable, uh, please go to the website or YouTube. We'll be there usually 48 hours, Mike. Sometimes a couple of days we'll be on YouTube so you can share with uh, your friends and family. And I'm sure that some of you will be very famous stars soon. Uh, Christy Hafner, thank you very much. Thank and you. And congratulations, Deborah, uh, Chris, and Don. It has been a delight and an honor having you tonight on our show. And you. come back again, please. Well, we you. will be waiting for you, ladies and gentlemen. It has been a delight having Penn Elementary School, the uh, famous school of North Liberty and the oldest, older than me at least. Uh, and have a very good night. We don't have snow, so you don't have any excuse. You can go out and enjoy Iowa City in a wonderful night of November. Uh, the year 2015. Thank you. <laughs>